ว่าLove to the family, Lincoln, man. We're going to get in this drop, Lincoln drop, man. A while back, man, I'm just getting around to it, man. I'm a slow poke. That's why I tell the fam, you got something to drop, man. Pick up your camera, your recording device, and drop it on the family, man. That's A lot of times, we get it faster that way because then we see your your drop. We could just feature it, you know what I'm saying? But if you wait for us to read it and decipher it and discern, you know what I mean, all that other stuff, man, make sure, you know what I'm saying? If you wait for us to get the babies out of the hijacker and all that kind of stuff, just drop it, man. Just drop it, man. That's, you know, all praise uh, our beautiful Hawaii for allowing us to just drop it, man. That's all we're doing right now. We don't have that much time. 
We don't got that much time. We just got to drop it. We're just talking about the rivers, the river red, right? Remember the San Banyan? I just pulled this up right quick, quick so you can see an example of what the San Banyan, you know, looks like. This is an example of what it looks like. Any questions? I mean, it's a river of, you know, boulders, stones, you know what I'm saying? Um, lost lost uh, tribes and promised lands. Uh, Rudolph Sanders says, you know, it's, it's this it's precious stones hurling up to the heavens. So, you know, this would be a very weak version of the San Banyan. Again. You gotta imagine the story goes that ten of the tribes were exiled across the San Banyan. Some even say that the San Banyan River completely encompassed them, encircled them, so they couldn't, you know, exit that particular place that they were exiled to. So, if it only rested on the Sabbath, and it's called the Sabbath River, and the only time it stopped moving. That's when they can cross it. I mean, let me give you an example. Let's get an example. Let's go. Uh, actually, they probably got some over here. Here's another example of a river of stones. Any questions? All right. So imagine this, you know, times 50. I don't know. And imagine trying to cross this thing when it's going going at full speed hurling stones you can't cross this river that's these are called uh barriers boundaries man you got boundaries with these things you're gonna need some flying machines for real to get over the sad man yeah. So this one fed into, you know, another water source. So, you know, if you go to, uh, let's say you put in Stone. Stone River. Because some of these aren't running anymore. Some of these moving stone, stone rivers, you know what I'm saying? When the water went underground, they just turned into a long pile of stone. Um, let me see. Let me get a good one. This one might make sense. Let's try this. California's coastal interests, who use billions of gallons right, of imported so water boom. every year, are using dirty. Chingala! Alright, let go. Duck and Stone River. This is in Roos. Roosha. Pause. This is a river, people. This used to carry and throw boulders all the way around and all that stuff, too. And then the water subsided underground, the underground rivers, right? So the water goes underground. What happens? The rivers, all the stones just stop. Now you can cross it, all right? So if this is the Sabbath, this is when, you know what I'm saying, according to Rudolph Sanders and the Lost Tribes of Promised Land and some other sources we're about to get right now, we'll go quickly, man. We got a lot to cover, man. We got a lot to cover, man. We got a lot to cover. Shout out to the Sister Todd Battle, man, who dropped this on the fam to, today. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit 
of this document as well, man. We're going to tie all this, man, just surf the wave and not get too heavy or head heavy, you know, just kind of connect what we can with what the Most High is providing us and bringing to our attention right now in these days. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? So, you know, the river would run six days and it would rest on the Sabbath. And this is what it would look like when it's resting. Now you can cross it, but it's the Sabbath. You might not want to be doing all that work on the Sabbath. So they were in exile because they couldn't cross the Sabbath river on the Sabbath. Come on, man. All right, this is the stone. All right, all right. So I'm just trying to give you a perspective, give you some, uh, you know, a couple images so we can see what we're talking about. Here's another stone river. Let's see what's going on here, man. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Look at this, man. Have you ever have you ever seen such a thing? All right. This is a river people of stone. So this ain't play play and this ain't mythology. This is your actual reality and what's being covered up and you're being put in these, you know, hybrid artificial synthetic cities, biometric robotic cities, concrete. And you forgot about all the mysteries of the land that was created only for you. I'm talking about my copper colored race found here by the European. I'm talking about the American. Yeah, this is for the American. What else is for the American? Oh, I'm supposed to do this for everybody? Come on, man. Everything's been taken from us. Everything's been taken from us. I'm doing this for us, for us, by us. This is for the copper color races found here by the so-called European. And I need you to focus on these stone rivers. And I need you to focus on who you are because this is the key. You are the key. You will unlock this when you connect. We're only talking about the Sabbath River, the Sabanyan River. Let's get a little bit. Two and a half millennia ago, King Shalmanazar exiled the last of the ten tribes. The date was 556. We dodged the hijacked timeline. We can surf the wave of is King Shalmanazar another name for Genghis Khan who hijacked Prester John Wang Kong? Was this a Khan on Khan invasion? Ever since people have been wondering, ever since people have been wondering what became of these myriads of Jews scattered like chaff to the wind, some over the Sambanyan River, some to Daphne or Daphne, Daphne of Antochia, yeah, while some were hidden in a cloud. What? That's out the Yerushalayim Sanhedrin 10.1. Says that some of y'all was hidden, hidden in a cloud or a craft, however you want to look at a flying cloud-like thing. Some were hidden in a cloud, so some of them were hidden in the cloud. Does that sound like some people who might be in the mountains so high that they're covered in a cloud? Easiest to track down should be the Sambanyan River due to the mysterious trait that makes it unique. The Gemora, Gemora Sanhedrin 65b tells us that when Tarnu Srufas challenged our Akiva, why is this day Shabbos different than any other days? Than other days, Rabbi Akiva answered that there are three proofs that Shabbat or Shabbat, the Sabbath, is a day of rest. First, so here is his first proof that the Sabanyan River 
the Sambat Yan River is the first proof. All right, that the Shabbat is the day of rest because you only the Most High <laughs> created this river as a sign. He said, "Man, if you can't get it right through your knucklehead, look at the river, see how it rests on the seventh day, the San Banyan River that rests on Shabbos. Second, the fact that one cannot call up the dead on Shabbos. Man, what are we talking about? One cannot call up the dead on Shabbos." Because even they are resting. Is this some witchcraft stuff that, you know, saying some some knowledge that they know when they try to call up their dead, even with the Egyptian, you know, book of the dead and all the dead, dead, they can't even call up they dead on the Sabbath because they even got to rest. And third, that the grave of Ternus Rufus, wicked father, smoked the whole week, but ceased to smoke on Shabbos. All right. These are their signs. All right. All right. In Midrash, Turn Ruf, Turnus Rufus rejects Rabbi Akiva's proof of the San Banyan since he never viewed it personally. And indeed, even its location is subject to a variety of opinions, perhaps. First to mention its location is Josephus's War, Josephus's in the book War 751. Who describes how Titus passed the Sabbath Yan? How Titus, Titus, Titus passed the Sabbath Yan on his victorious trip to Rome after conquering Eretz Israel. Eretz means land, right? And then um, much I have to uh, teach me to be priestly breaking down that Eretz, the Erez and the Arizona, Erez, Erez, Arizona, Erez, Erez, Arizona. Man, love to the brother Perusalem, man. I'm going to uh, leave a link so y'all can subscribe to the bro Perusalem. Man, I mean, um, you, <laughs> you're talking about powering up, you know what I mean? In a, in a real, true, real spill fashion, man. I mean, all praise the most high for uh, the miracles, you know what I'm saying, that our brothers and sisters really are, you know, each of you are miracles. It's miraculous, man. So, uh, definitely dig on Jerusalem, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Click that link, go dig on all that teach drop, man, especially, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with exactly what we're breaking down and you're going to be able to connect this to the arrests, to the cedars, definitely get that last drop. All right. So Titus passed the Sabanyan on his victorious trip to Rome. Now, I don't care how crazy this sounds. You're going to need crazy. You need crazy. You came here for crazy. <laughs> you came here for the interruption. If they manipulated your timeline over 1,300 years, don't make me go get 1,800 years, really. Don't make me go, go, go get the whole Anatoly for the Manko, Russian chronographer breaking down how they kept shifting the time when it came to the uh, medieval chronographers, you know what I'm saying? They they literally took the real event that happened after the 900s and they created phantoms and duplicates, phantoms and duplicates, phantoms and duplicates. And we're waking up today saying, where's the phantom? And you know what I'm saying? Where's the reality and where's the duplicate? What history should I believe? Where's the real one and where's the duplicate? Why is all these, you know what I'm saying, points matching up between the Roman chronography and the Egyptian chronography and, and all these different things. It seems like to be the same kings in different places in different times, the same kings in different places, the same kingdoms in different places put in different times in your timeline. Would they do it? Yes, they have meetings about this. They have meetings about how to screw you up, turn you upside down and spin you around, right? So Titus... In this Roman invasion that we keep reading about in 70 AD, my people surfed away. I can't remember this, uh, you know, scholar's name, but they came over here on this page. And, uh, you know, this, you know, European scholar, some school, whatever they're, whatever school they're attached to. I'm just going to leave it all out. And uh, she said, uh, you know, I just want to confirm, you know, the data that you're coming out with. 1300 years were added to all native peoples on all native lands. 
1300 years and this is her separate confirmation that was just you know corroborating what we are already digging on they coming over here to corroborate so if we're surfing the wave and if they're validating it you know in certain inner circles now that's not the uh that's not the majority so she's coming to us with the minority report man and again shout out to divine prospect who dropped that minority report a while back man i mean that was part of my wake-up call for sure man so because now we're digging on not the majority scholars but the minority ones the ones that are pushed to the background and that what got me really digging in the background even more you gotta keep going gotta keep going gotta keep going so she's saying 1300 years is added to all native peoples on all native lands so when they give you a story in 70 a.d and you know that according to how how we're surfing and how some people are corroborating it in this their, their scholarly minority community 1300 years by default was added to your timeline by default so 70 AD or something happening in the Roman invasion is really happening when you put those 1300 years back 1370 or 13 we're talking the 1300s remember they added 1300 years which means they they inserted their own 1300 years of bullshit if they're adding it they're saying hmm I'll stretch this out and put 1300 years of bullshit in between to stretch it out to add 1300 years by adding it they're stretching you away from your concrete reality they're they're psychologically blasting your ass to the past they're blasting you back 1300 years so if this Jesus is warning, if Jesus is warning his disciples about the Roman invasion, follow me now. Just follow me, man. Too many mind, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going, man. It's just, it's just me, you. <laughs> we talking Ruach. Let's go. If Jesus is warning his disciples about the Roman invasion, saying, "Go flee to the mountains." And 1300 years by default was added to your timeline. Then when you subtract what was added. What's happening. In 70 AD or 50 AD or, or 30 AD. is happening in 1330, 1350, 1370. Isn't that the dark ages? Isn't that a period of time that's hush hush? We're talking 1200s, 1100s, up to the 1300s. Now we're connecting that with the Joshua that's right here leading the Aztecs. Yut Aztec. Aztec means people of purity, what they call whiteness in English. Remember, we don't speak English. My only beef with white is the English word. I don't want to be a part or labeled in this frequency. Because they have put their own spells on these words. So when they claim the English word white, they're claiming the abstraction of your Lebanon, an abstraction of your purity, putting a spell on it. You can't claim white. You can't claim the spell of it. Just claim the foundation of your purity is all you need to connect to Hawa. The foundation of your purity, not the English word white. That has no frequency that connects to you. It's an abstraction. It's a snapshot of your purity, of your real, your real righteousness. We're talking about that Kodesh. Kodesh, man, you got to just write, you got to connect now to something that's realer than everything you've ever been taught. And could Titus, Titus passed the sad man on his victorious trip to Rome after conquering Eretz Israel 
We're talking about the land of Israel. Where is the land of Israel, people? You know it. Where is the promised land? Where is Jerusalem? Where is Mexico? Where is Hawiku? So this invasion that we're taught about, this Titus, this Vespasian, are only duplicates of the actual invasion that happened 1300 years in the future since they added time in the future from their 70 AD 1300 years in the future is when the actual concrete invasion of Israel remember Columbus said I'm coming to the holy city to conquer Mount Zion to conquer Zion, to conquer the holy city in Mount Zion. That was his entire mission. In the Indias, the further Indias, in the Eretz Israel, in the land, in the holy land. So after being victorious in their invasion here, that's when Columbus or Titus passed the San Banyan here. Remember, he even said the Orinoco River flowing out of South America was flowing out of the terrestrial paradise. He said the Orinoco River flowing out of Mount Rorema was connected to the terrestrial paradise. So he knows Eden is here. He knows it's the promised land and he knows this is the holy city. You were hidden here. You were sandwiched here. You are in between Lemuria and Atlantis. In Eretz, the Eretz, Eretz. So when they say, Josephus says, he describes how Titus passed the sand at Yah. They're not saying over there. Everything they're talking about is here. We're talking South America. We're talking North America, so-called North, so-called South. All of it is connecting here. Just like they're telling you right up in your face bone. The Grand River Red. The Grand River Red. Now, surfing that wave, let's keep going. So Jesus warning Jesus, <laughs> Jesus warning his disciples about the Romans coming is equivalent in reality to Joshua warning his followers about the Columbus invasion. Because Joshua is here. We're talking Kitsukoto if you surf in the way. Just if we're surfing away, we're talking priest king. We're talking Preston John, priest king. Who led his people to the promised land. Kitsukoto, priest king, wore a robe of crosses, a robe of Tao. So did Jesus warn his people about the Roman invasion? Or did the priest king, Hawashua, warn, warn his followers? about the invasion to come that we are now calling this, you know, Columbus thing. But we were invaded before Columbus, right? We were invaded by Genghis Khan. Preston John had a war. It went down. So which invasion was he, you know what I'm saying, warning about? And Rome is just an illusion. There is no, you know what I mean? So all these are titles of the same thing. We really got to surf the wave, but let's have some fun. So, strangely, the English edition of this episode has the San Benyar River running on Shabos and drying during the week, contrary to, to Hazel or Chazal. Only the Hebrew edition gets it right. So, look what they did with the English edition. They flipped it. Instead of the San Benyar running six days and then resting on the Sabbath, the English edition has the Sabbath running on the... <laughs> Has the San Benyan River running on the Sabbath, but then not running the rest of the week, but it only runs on the Sabbath. I mean, so you see how they try to flip it, man. <clears throat> yeah, 
just one more thing I want to pay. Why not? But this is where we at. Where's the Petros? 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 Okay, here we go. Petros. So let's skip down here. Centuries later, during the 9th century, the Sandman Yan was given a brand new location by the mysterious Eldad, man. So if you got the drop, you know, that we dropped on before, we mentioned this Eldad the Danite, all right? You know, he was talking about this and the tribes of Moses and all that and the lost tribes of promised land. Go get the drop. So now he's giving it a new location by the mysterious Eldad, Hodoni, who claimed to come from the lost tribes and reported to San Banyan as lying somewhere south of, e of Ethiopia. Ah, uh, where's Ethiopia? Where's Ethiopia? See, it wasn't a distinct place until like the 1800s or so. Before that, the Eptos, remember, Eptos, Eptio, Eptopia. We're just talking Greek titles. We're talking Abyssinia. We're talking the priest king of Abyssinia. And that means, you know, pretty much a region of what they were calling dark-skinned people. So that could be the Ethiopia of the Orient or the Ethiopia of the West. And remember, East is West and West is East because they flipped the map upside down. So you are in the East if you think you're in the West. And you are in Ethiopia and you are in India. Ethiopia, is, just like the Indian Ocean was the Ethiopian Ocean, they're all... They're, all these are the same. Negro, Ethiopian, Indian, Negush. In fact, this accords with the verse in Yesha Yahu 11 11. All right, we're talking about Isaiah mentioning some of the 10 tribes being exiled to Patros. Patros, all right, we're going to look on this Patros on the southern Nile and to Ethiopia. Whoa. Right, There's a couple things that's very important here. Because I told you America is Ethiopia. We know America is Egypt, which means, of course, America is Ethiopia. And we're talking about the Nile being here. And we surfed the wave of the Mississippi River, you know, pretty much lining up to the Nile or, you know, being the same, you know, pretty much twin of the Nile. We had a, a document breaking down how the Mississippi was the twin of the Nile. But we're talking about another Nile. We're talking... We're talking about a river that flows and connects all throughout. It's not just one now over here. All of it is the so-called now. Get off the titles. We're just talking about a body of water that's connecting. And remember, we're just talking the Colorado River. We're just talking the Colorado River. My name, My name is, is Red. Red. The Grand River Red. The American Nile. The American Nile. What are we reading right here? Yeshayahu 1111 mentioning some of the ten tribes being exiled to Patros on the southern Nile. Can we serve the wave that we're still in America? And we're just talking about the River Red and the Nile. The Grand River Red. The American Nile. All we're talking about is the Nile right now. The American Nile. The American Nile. Remember the Euphrates River? All that dropping the River Euphrates in America that we got that before. So we found the Euphrates in America. We got the Nile in America. All right? We got the Red Sea. All this stuff is, we're just talking bodies of water and titles. Now, Patros. Of course, you like Patros. Come on, man. You're going to find Patros in America, man. Come on, man. Look, man, it ain't easy. Oh, man. Woo. It ain't easy. I just banged my knee on my desk bone. <laughs> it ain't easy, man. But Patros, man, you just got to surf the wave. Instead of spelling it Patros, P-A-T-R-O-S, you know how they're crafty. You have to look up P-A-T-E-R-O-S. Just put the E in it. 
What do you get? Patros, Washington. Washington. So if you're in exile, let's say we're talking uh, the Grand Canyon. Let's just surf the wave around the Grand Canyon for a second. The Grand Canyon being Egypt, Egypt, with the Nile River being near Egypt. River Red. The American Nile. Maybe. I mean, there's an American Nile running through the Grand Canyon. Okay, so Patros, Washington. So if Egypt, Grand Canyon, Arizona, Four Corners, now you got Washington. So if you're in Washington, clearly you're exiled outside of something. Outside of, you know, this area here, this uh this Grand River Red, right? You're you're in exile outside of this. Ten tribes being exiled to Patros on the southern Nile and to Ethiopia, alright? So we're just talking Patros, you know, just surfing the wave with you. Would this make sense as a biblical city? They're exiled to Patros on on the southern now, the southern part of this now. River Red. The American Nile. The southern now. They're exiled to the southern now. And you're saying, yeah, well, Washington is north of the four corners not if you flip the map negro not if you flip the map correctly to its correct state you're upside down right now and you're probably spinning stop spinning on the ball and flip yourself then you'll have orientation because that's what your enemy does to you they erase you they disorient you we're talking Sh shalom and nasser or we're talking the other con we're talking the sons of moses in America, just like the Lost Tribes of Promised Land was breaking down. Patros, Washington. Hey, why wouldn't it be if uh, Prince Uriel obeys, you know, is talking about uh, New York and he, he called New York Jerusalem and uh, Morocco, Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying, and all that. So if Morocco's in Philadelphia, Mauritania, should I say, if Mauritania's in Philadelphia, Patros might be in Washington. Shit, he's surfing the wave, man. Surf it away. All right, man. Let's keep going, man. Oh, man. That's some copper drop, man. I tell you, man. Love to link and We're going to get this probably next, my man. We're going to get that, bro. All right. So let's shift our attention with this great drop that we're getting about our orientation to the Sefer Yet Zira. And in love to my sister Todd Battle because, you know, I dropped this on the site. The sister caught it quick. And, uh, you know, she... <laughs> She follow up with uh, Chef Candy about it, and then they got to t she got to talking to me about it, and I started looking at it more, and I said, "Wow, you know." And it, yeah, it it can information can twist you this way, or twist you that way. We got foundation, so we can't be twisted. When you see, you gotta know yourself. You start to recognize yourself. So that's what the babies are. That's what you're attracted to. It's you. And all the esoteric bullshit just fades away because you're going to get what you need out of it. We're just talking about the formation. I shaped you. I formed you. We're talking frequency, energy. We're talking sefer, meaning book. The book of energy or the book of the formation. Yezerah is the title of the earliest extent book on Jewish esoteric. Eso esotericism although some early com commentators treated it as a treatise on mathematical and linguistic theory as opposed to Kabbalah so you know Kabbalah mean more you know secret da -da -da -da, whatever you want to you know label this and label that all of it is you they're just blasting it in different directions all right so you have babies of yourself in all of this when you know and recognize yourself that's why knowing yourself <laughs> is really the key uh, when we expose the indigenous truth, you know what I'm saying, we connect that, man, with our, you know, concrete connection to our creator, you know what I mean? That's when a lot starts opening up, or orientation, everything else. So, 
you know, some early commentators treated it as a treatise on mathematical and linguistic theory. A treatise on mathematical and linguistic theory. You're just talking about the frequency, mathematical numbers, gematria numbers, the code, a code, some type of code. Yetzira is more literally translated as formation. The word bria is used for creation. The book is traditionally ascribed to the patriarch Abraham. So this is supposed to be some of Abraham's drop. Uh, and we're just surfing the wave through it. Although others attribute it to Rabbi Akiva. And we just heard Akiva's name being dropped. Now let's see. Yeah, right here. Rabbi Akiva. The Jamora tells us that when Ternus Rufus challenged our Akiva, why is the day... Shabos different than any other day. Akiva answered that there are three proofs. And that's when he said the Sabbath river is the proof, man. So this is play, you know, we ain't playing with this. It ain't no play play. It's, you know, this is connecting. So now we got uh, some, say, it's the writings of Akiva. All right, so we can surf that. Modern scholars haven't reached consensus on the question of its origin. So nobody knows. Nobody knows. Even more reason to surf the wave in it, man. All right, so you know we're gonna get a little bit of this drop from um from uh R. Wayne Steiger, man. Love to R. Wayne Steiger, love to uh, WSO. You know, um, everyone has these pieces, man. I like to uh, pay attention when I can. And yeah, I got three different breakdowns on this, man, that I pulled up separately. Uh, this one here, the book of the formation, you know, we can dig on that. I'll definitely drop it for you so you can dig on it on your own, man. This one right here, book of formation, the letters of our father, Abraham. So, okay. And we got this one here, the Sefer Yezera, translated from the Hebrew, right? So, these are three different looks at the same thing that I'll leave for you. Um, you know, we can kind of surf this one right quick. It's chapter one with 32 mythical paths of wisdom engraved, who they're calling Yah, which we know, Hawa or Wa. Remember, before it was Yah, it was Wa. They always take you out of your W's. They always take you out of your W, your frequency. Engraved Wa, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the living God, King. Of the universe, El Shaddai, merciful and gracious, high and exalted, dwelling in eternity, whose name is holy. He is lofty and holy, and he creates his, he created his universe with three books, Sepharim, with text, Sefer, with numbers, Safar, and with communication, Super, Super. I know, I've never heard nothing quite like that either. This is out of the Book of Formation. All right, this ain't Beyonce's formation. No, no, no. <laughs> he created his universe with three books, the Sepharim. All right, so you probably think that's angels. And then now we're saying these are books. Interesting, right? With text, Sephir. All right, that's the book, the text. With number, Safar, and with communication, Sephir. Ten sephirot of nothingness and twenty-two foundational letters. Those, that's the Hebrew Aleph Bet. Remember, twenty-two amino acids, right? building blocks. Three mothers, seven doubles, and twelve elementals. What does it mean? I don't know. I'm serving this with you. What does it mean? I'm asking you. Leave a comment. <laughs> Three mothers, seven doubles, and twelve elementals. Ten sephirot of nothingness and the number of ten fingers, five opposite five five opposite five with a singular covenant, precisely in the middle, in the circumcision of the tongue, and in the circumcision of the membrane. Ten sephirot of nothing nothingness. Ten and not nine. Ten and not eleven. Understand with wisdom. Be wise with understanding. Examine with them and probe from them. Make each thing stand on its essence and make 
the creator sit at its base, at its base. Ten sephirite of nothingness. Their measure is ten which have no end. A depth of beginning, a depth of end. A depth of good, a depth of evil, a depth of above, a depth of below, a depth of east, a depth of west, a depth of north, a depth of south. The singular master, God, faithful king, dominates over them all from his holy dwelling until eternity of eternities. Ten sephirot of nothingness. Their vision is like the appearance of lightning. Their limit has no end and his word in them is running and returning. They rush to his saying like a whirlwind and before his throne they prostrate themselves. Ten sephirot of nothingness. Their end is embedded in their beginning and their beginning and their end like a flame in a burning coil. For the master is singular. He has no sound. No, he has no second. And before one who and before one, what do you count? Ten sephirot of nothingness br brittle your mouth from speaking and your heart from thinking. And if your heart runs, return to the place. It is therefore written, the Chayat, running and returning. Regarding this, a covenant was made. Ezekiel 124. Ten sephirot of nothingness. One is the breath. Of the living God. Blessed and benedicted is the name of the life of worlds, the voice of breath and speech. Hawa. And this is the holy breath, the secure breath. Hawa. Two breath from breath. With it, he engraved and carved 22 foundational le letters, three mothers, seven doubles, and twelve elementals and one breath is from them three water from breath with it he engraved and carved 22 letters from chaos and void mirror and clay he engraved them like a sort of garden and he carved them like a sort of wall and he covered them like a sort of ceiling and he poured snow over them, and it became dust, and for it, for it was written, For to snow, he said, become earth. Job 37, 6. For fire from water. With it he engraved and carved the throne of glory, Sepharim, Afanim, and the holy Chayot, and ministering angels. From these three he founded his dwelling, as it is written, he makes his angels of breaths, his ministers of flaming fire. Psalms 104 and 4. He chose three letters from among the elementals in the mystery of the three mothers, Aleph, Mem, Shin. And he set them in his great name. And with it, and with them, he sealed six extremities, five. He sealed above and faced upward and sealed it with yud a vav or wa. Remember the vav is a wa. A wa. Six, he sealed below and faced downward and sealed it with ha yud va. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Now look how this. <laughs> Look how this uh, is like every combination when he said he set them in his great name and with them he sealed six extremities. He sealed above the face and faced upward and sealed it with Yod, Ha, Wa. Remember the He and the Wa. He sealed below and faced downward and sealed it with Ha, Yod, Wa. He sealed seven. He sealed east and faced straight ahead and sealed it with Wa, Yod, Ha. Eight. He sealed west and faced backward and sealed it with Wa, Ha, Yod. Nine. He sealed south and faced to the right and sealed it with Yod, Yud, Yod, <laughs> Yod, Wa, Ha. And ten, he sealed north and faced to the left and sealed it with Ha, Wa, 
Ya Yud Yud. Alright. You try, you try. These are the ten sephiroth of nothingness. The breath, the breath, ha wa, the secure breath of the living God or creator. Breath from breath, water from breath, fire from water, up, down, east, west, north, south. And I'm just saying, you got to, you know, get with it or get left on. You got to get the baby. If you can't get babies out of this. All right, this is not what no one is pushing on you. This is what you're digging on. All right, <laughs> always remember, you know, they can canonize or canonize whatever they would like to do. It's up to you to dig on it, man. So again, love to uh, Ty Battle for bringing this to, you know, deeper into my cipher, man. And uh, shout out to uh, R. Wayne Steiger, man. Definitely seems to, you know, he, he he's definitely a Christian. He's definitely going to try to pull in, you know. You know, Jesus is going to come in here somewhere. You know that, man. But, you know, he's willing to surf the wave more than most, you know, most of them are, should I say. So, you know, I enjoy getting some babies out from time to time. Let's dig on this Sefer Yet Zera from uh, Wayne Steiger, man. And uh, this might be a two-parter, man. So we're going to take our time with it. Let's go. Well, hello, everyone. How are you doing? So, I have been working on a lot of projects, and as I continue to accumulate data, information, I want to share it with you. But some of this information, well, quite frankly, a lot of people aren't really prepared for, and I can appreciate that. We all come along at our own pace. But enough of you are here that I think that you can handle this because this is strong stuff that we're going to get into. So we're going to be discovering this book that maybe some of you have heard, maybe some of you haven't heard, called The Safar Yet Zara. Now, for simplistic purposes on the reader, listening to me, we'll just simply use from here on out the Safar. So this is quite an interesting book. Um, it is a book that has been around for many, many years, centuries, uh, thousands of years. In fact, it is thought that this book uh, was originated with Abraham of all people. It is taught that Abraham, the patriarch, handed this down to Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, etc. Now, some will say, and you'll do your research, that this is Kabbalism. Well, it is. Uh, but, so what? If you're going to take the Hebraic faith, and whatever the case may be, if you adapt it for yourself, then you have to know the whole history. You can't simply pick and choose what's convenient um, with your particular ideology or theology. Now, now, we got to get into another dimension. All right, again, we're going to take our time. This might be two parts. It might be three. It won't be more than that because we got to get the press of John. And we're rounding that corner. And again, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it happens like this because all of it, if you if you really surf in the wave, you know that we never really left press of John. You know, we just don't say this is press of John 29. It is, but we're always talking about Wong Khan, Wong Khan, King Kong, King Khan. We're always talking about King Kong. We're all, we always got Preston John in mind. Because we know we're talking about Abraham. Abraham. And we've been surfing the wave. Even in the OSB, we've been surfing the wave, man. Yeah, I got the I got the glossary up of the OSB. You know it. Hold on, let me get let me get that. Let me make sure we're good. All right. 
All right, man. So let's surf the way I want to turn this glossary a little bit. Now you see Abram, afterwards called Abraham, and E. Hawan, Hawa. H U A is always Hawa. Large. Now they're saying Abram or Abraham. Look how they describe Abraham. Just so you know, this ain't play play when we dig on this copper drop. Abraham and E. Hawanan. Hawanan. Hawan. Large and red like new copper. I can't make this shit up. How do I know I'm going to go to the lawgivers and the prophets and the OSB? Look at the definition in the glossary of Abraham and get red like new copper. The red man, the copper man. Oh, you forgot? Red man, the copper man, American, American. Khan, Khan, Wang Khan, King Khan, Priest King, Genghis Khan, hijacked the Khan, he stole your Khan, your title. Now what happens to your title? A Mary Khan, a native of America, originally applied to the originals or copper colored races. Copper colored. Abraham, large and red like new copper and had black hair and a long beard fierce to look upon but his soul was gentle as a woman's <laughs> he was a persian according to you know they put their hijack in this is the osb but remember you know what i'm saying all of this was connected even on that uh that that war map we got iranistan is connected right over south america so that Persia is not necessarily the real Persia. That China is not necessarily the real China. That Asia is not necessarily the real Asia. He was so-called what they're calling Persian. And the founder of the ancient Hebrews or Israelites, they say. Israelites. Ancient Hebrews. So you know who we're talking about. And also the founder of migration for religion's sake. He took his followers into Egypt. Red, copper, color. Again, American. Copper color races found here, not from Africa. You were just found here in a brand new world by so called Europeans. But now applied, what happened to your titles? What happened to your titles of your cons? Now apply to the descendants, the, the successors of the invaders or the so-called Europeans that are born here after they invade you. They have babies and their babies take your titles because they're born in America. Now they're cons. Now they're Americans. And you're, you're black. <laughs> Nigga, you black. You're an adjective now. You're a color. And our brothers are promoting it, right? Because they're cool with your con being stolen and given to the descendants of Europeans that are only born here. But you're the copper color race found here.